I'm Evans Maragis, the Harry T. Wilkes Artistic Director for Cincinnati Opera. The opera Silent Night is fiction based on fact. It tells the story of the miraculous truce on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day of 1914. I thought it would be helpful to ground this particular story in reality because so many of the places associated with the story of World War I exist. There are memorials in nearly every single town in France. Tiny villages sometimes lost their entire male population. And in big cities, of course, the numbers were enormous. I'm standing in the communal cemetery of the little village of Ors in northeastern France, in the region known as Pas de Calais. Behind me are the graves of over 60 British soldiers who died on the morning of the 4th of November, 1918, in a single assault trying to cross the Sambrouaz Canal. Among those buried here is the great English poet, Wilfred Owen. You see, the war is real. It has repercussions down to our time. And one of the things that is so wonderful about Silent Night as an opera is that it personalizes the great war by telling us the stories of individuals. Yes, they're made up, but men like them lived. So come with me on a journey to a couple of places associated with this great war and this wonderful story. At Christmas 1914, this village was well behind enemy lines. And in the opera Silent Night, one of the French soldiers named Ponchel dreams of spending just one more day in his village, called Lens, also occupied by the German army, and it's only about 90 kilometers from here. This region of Pas-de-Calais is also where most men named Ponchel would have been from. I've driven across France to perhaps the most famous French military cemetery of all, Douaumont, which is located within the battlefield of Verdun. The two most devastating battles of the war were the Battle of the Somme, west of here in Picardy, and at Verdun, not far from the French-German border. I've come here for a reason directly connected to Silent Night. In the 300 days of the Battle of Verdun, nearly 700,000 combatants on all sides of the conflict were killed, and it took place in an area no bigger than seven square miles. Today, this landscape appears to be simply rolling woodland, but a closer look shows that the undulating countryside is carved from bomb craters and former trenches. Military fortifications like pillboxes that survived the battle have been left as mute memorials. Come closer. On this hillside, there are more than 13,000 graves with markers. And there is an uncanny connection with Silent Night, our opera. While I was preparing for this visit, I found a French website that lists the names of all the French who fell in battle, and when a grave site is known, where any one man is buried. Our opera character, Ponchel, really existed. There are no fewer than nine Ponchels whose final resting place is known, and one of them is here, in Douaumont. The most hard-hitting fact for me about this beautiful memorial is that beneath the tower that crowns the hillside of Douaumont is an ossuary filled with the bones of 130,000 men and women, some of whose identities are known, but most of whom are among the millions of anonymous dead. What impresses me is the quiet. It's an overcast day in April. Spring, as you can see, is returning to the hillsides. Nowhere is that silence more profound than at one of the 14 villages nearby that was lost forever. All over France and Belgium, there are towns that were simply bombed out of existence. The village of Fleury, about two miles from Douaumont, has been preserved as an exemplary memorial. Where the three roads once were, there are now marked pathways. Where there were buildings, small markers are placed in the earth to remind us that this flourishing farm village had a school, a bakery, a washing house, a parish church, and homes for about 400 inhabitants. The greatest surprise of this entire visit also came to me from the French website. It's taking me to a smaller cemetery just west of Douaumont in the village of Avocourt. Time and again in the opera Silent Night, there are moments when the enormity of the war and the human stories of its characters collide. 
though the characters are fiction, drawn from the collective memory of the Christmas truce, as we've already seen with Ponchel, men like them existed. When the respective commanders of the French, English, and German forces come to the front to punish the lieutenants for engaging in the Christmas truce, a particularly poignant encounter is between the French general and the French lieutenant. In the opera, he's known as Odebert. He doesn't have a first name. He's just Odebert, Lieutenant Odebert. And the general says to him that he should have been court-martialed. But because Odebert is who he is, which we'll discover, the general has arranged for a safe place for him to go, where your new German friends won't find you, he says in the opera. This is, of course, Christmas 1914. Who knew that the place where the general sent his son, Lieutenant Odebert, would be the killing fields of Verdun? Here, in the Avocourt Cemetery, killed just two months after the Christmas truce, lies one Lieutenant Louis Odebert. He could very well have been that son of the French general in Silent Night. And even if he is not, it brings home for me, 100 years later, that this war changed the world forever. The statistics of World War I are so enormous that they can become meaningless, starting with the number 9 million, the number of men and women killed on all sides of the battle. What I hope for all of us when we experience Silent Night in Music Hall on July 10th and 12th is that perhaps one or two of these images I've just shared with you will stay with you to remind us that this war and the Christmas truce actually occurred. Visible evidence exists for us to ponder, to reflect, and I hope to learn. As one of the Scottish soldiers sings in the last moments of the opera, it was the most amazing thing. I shall never forget it.